name is Steve Gross. I'm a produce grower here at Green Eagle Farm. Green Eagle Eco Farm, I guess we could call it. Out here near Onondaga, Michigan, in the quiet countryside, in the middle of a mosquito patch, I guess. <laughs> what sort of uh, stuff do you grow out here? Oh, we try to grow things without any kind of a toxin or chemical applied to it. Uh, and we try to grow a little bit of just about anything we eat or can grow, you know, or can have a little fun growing anyway, trying to grow. So we grow vegetables of all sorts, tomatoes, potatoes, onions, nothing in a large, large scale, but enough to go to a couple farmers markets and maybe have a little extra for the food co-op and try to have clean food for us and our family and friends. So, you know, we have just a little bit of about anything, all kinds of greens, some unusual things like arugula, um, sorrel, uh, dandelion greens, but then your standards are like kale and Swiss chard and spinach when we can and, and lettuce. Uh, everybody wants lettuce and so we're working on you know just about a little bit of everything you know I think of something I didn't mention I probably have it zucchini cucumber a little bit of watermelon some okra this year a lot of different cherry tomatoes um, garlic everybody likes that garlic we grow about six kinds of garlic that's one one of our bigger money makers just because we grow a lot of it and, and we can uh, we do a pretty good job with it and just like I say, just a little bit of everything that's in the vegetable category. We've also got some blueberry bushes that we mostly harvest ourselves. We've got Asian pears, we sell some. We have uh, pears and some apple trees and many different bushes. We try to be diversified because uh, the earth is diversified. We don't, like, we don't monocrop anything. And we try to, you know, farm it with a lot of hand labor and people labor rather than large machine labor and sprays. And so, you know, we get more people involved that way. And um, we also, we just stay healthier with our physical activity. And every year we're doing a little more, trying to make it more people friendly, but still keep it friendly to all the rest of the creatures that God placed here, that nature has here. Everything has its place. We seem to be pretty good about eliminating their places with our agriculture, and that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to give the creatures their space, but also, you know, make it so we can be here in a, in a way that allows the earth to function more properly. In May of 2012, it'll be 25 years I've lived here, um, and a lot of it was hit and miss, smaller garden, a small garden got bigger, then bigger, then bigger. And then I met Chayla, she, she got involved in the farm 15 years ago. Then we really took off into farmers markets and things, you know, she's really helped out and, and helped make this farm function. Somehow or another, I was able to realize that the way things were going and the way, the kind of food I was eating, and it's not what I wanted to have put into my body. And so, you know, I, I get involved with it for a lot of reasons, you know, not just for feeding my body, but for the earth, you know what I mean? We're all part of the earth and we're wrecking the earth and a lot of it has to do with how we grow our food or procure our food or, or even like there's other things you might consider food, how you get your knowledge or your entertainment, the things you put into your space, you know? I mean, we're, we're wrecking the earth for our things, you know, like that's our food or something, you know, we want, we want. But, so I live a little simpler than that, you know, I don't buy a lot of things, I just get involved with food production and, and trying to live, uh, live happily with, you know, hearing the bugs <laughs> around my head, I guess, but <laughs> it's all, I mean, I love it out here, I mean, it's a great place, it's quiet, it's working with nature, I take some food to the farmer's markets and, and um, make enough, we make enough to get by through the winter. So many people, you know, the cities are crowded, but there's so much land nearby, you know, and it's not just here that we could do a little community, more gardening and work together. There is so much more land that could be loved and redeveloped into uh, a permaculture of fruit trees and, and shade trees and then right down to the berry bushes and, 
and the, the little plants, the annual plants. I mean, people could, so many more people could work the land and they would enjoy it. They would have physical, spiritual, emotional, healthy work. You can hear the difference when a big machine goes racing by here, you know, from the calm and the quiet of life, you know, and also here we go, the industrialized America goes by. Not that I can get away without machines, but you can you can see the contrast and you know. That's one value of farmers markets. It's less less industry in between you and your food and less pollution and even though it's temporary you get you can get a real good first of living fresh nutrients in the summertime that's a lot more difficult to get here in Michigan and everybody really should go get what they can from the farmers markets in the summertime and really you know feed up on the, on the fresh stuff you know <laughs> I don't know and save it if you can farmers have potatoes and onions and garlic and squash and beets and carrots and and, and maybe grains and bean products and things that you can save yourself in your own house and not be dependent on a big industrial enterprise to feed you at least partially in the winter. You could still be, you know, helping the earth and yourself and the local growers by buying that and saving it, you know. Don't just at the end of the market season go, oh, the market's done, good to have 50 pounds in your cupboard from a farmer. You know, I encourage that, you know.